This next one is an assigned problem from the homework, number 41. Uh, this one's going to be for you folks to try, but before you do that, just want to say a couple of things. First of all, avoid the common pitfall of trying to divide by something that you don't know isn't zero. I can actually see if cosine of x is zero, that's going to give me some solutions. So don't divide that out and lose those solutions. Second, this one looks a little bit tougher because I've got two different trig functions. And I want to be on the lookout. If I have two different trig functions, or sometimes we might have two different angles, sometimes I'm going to need to use a trig identity to try to get it down to just one trig function and one angle. In this case, I actually don't. It's okay to have two trig functions or even two angles in the same problem if you're able to separate them into distinct factors, okay? So I don't want to end up with two different trig functions or two different angles in the same factor, but if I can separate them into distinct factors, each factor sort of becomes its own problem. And that's what should happen here. So when you factor, you should be able to see that you're going to have some factors with cosines and some factors with tangents, and then you can deal with that. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video, work that one out. So since I can't divide the cosine out, I'm going to subtract it over to the other side. So cosine x, tan squared x, minus 3 cosine x is equal to 0. And now I can factor out a cosine x, and that's times tangent squared x minus 3 is equal to 0. So I can see if cosine of x is 0, that's going to give me some solutions. Now with this other factor, that's a quadratic in tangent. If I wanted to, I could factor that. I could view this as a difference of two squares because three is root three squared. So I could, if I wanted to, factor this as tan x plus root three times tan x minus root three. And then I would have a total of three factors throwing in that cosine. Okay, I'm actually gonna choose to keep that together as one thing and deal with the whole thing all at once. But I wanted to show you this because if you did it that way, you're certainly right and you should get the same answers. I'm going to just keep that together as one big quadratic factor and say this means either cosine x is 0 or tan squared x minus 3 is equal to 0. Now cosine of x is 0, of course that's a quadrantal angle. So if I look at my unit circle, that's going to be angles whose terminal ray intersect the unit circle at one of these points on the y-axis. And of course, in the interval from 0 to 2 pi, there are two such angles, pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Okay, and you'll notice these are pi apart, so if I want to, I should be able to consolidate those when I'm finding all solutions. Okay. All right, with this next one, tangent squared minus 3 equals 0. Well, I could have factored it, as I showed you. I could also say this means that tangent squared x equals 3. And then I can just take the square root of both sides. I just have to be super careful and remember that the square root of tangent squared isn't just tangent. It's the absolute value of tangent. Because root 3 is a positive number, tangent is sometimes positive and sometimes negative, but the absolute value of tangent will never be negative. This means then that tangent of x is plus or minus root 3. Okay. Now, because I'm working with tangent, I'm going to work in just one period. So I'm going to look for x values in the interval from 0 to pi. That would be one period that I would have. Um, and then I'll get all x, and then I'll get all x in the interval from 0 to 2 pi. Remember, tangent and cotangent are a little bit different just because their period is pi rather than 2 pi. Okay. So, what's kind of interesting is because this is plus or minus, and this corresponds to quadrants 1 and 2, I'm going to have two solutions. 
In quadrant one, I'm going to have a solution to tangent of x equals positive root 3. And in quadrant two, I'm going to have a solution to tangent of x equals negative root 3. Okay, now I see that root 3, and that looks like a familiar thing. So I'm going to draw my 30, 60, 90. Looks like I'm going to get a tangent of root 3 at 60 degrees, which would be pi over 3. So here, I can say there's my x. x would be pi over 3. Okay. Here, my reference angle would have to be pi over 3, because it's the acute angle whose tangent is root 3, the absolute value of this. And we just figured out that that was pi over 3. So here, x would be pi minus pi over 3. So that's 3 pi over 3 minus pi over 3. That's going to give me 2 pi over 3. OK. Now, those are my two solutions in one period of tangent. I'm going to get all solutions by adding a multiple of the period. But the period is just pi, not 2 pi. So I'll have pi over 3 plus pi n, 2 pi over 3 plus pi n, where n is an integer. And then I can say, OK, between 0 and 2 pi, so I can answer the entire question, part a, I'm going to say, OK, well, certainly pi over 3. But if I were to add pi to that, that would be adding 3 pi over 3. That would give me 4 pi over 3. Okay. So if I add pi to this, that's going to give me a solution in quadrant 3. All right. Let's see. Then I've got 2 pi over 3. If I add pi to that, that's going to put me in quadrant 4 at 5 pi over 3. So I've got these four solutions for tangent. <laughs> so now I'm able to say for part A, the solutions from 0 to 2 pi, that's going to include the solutions for where cosine was 0. So that's pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Okay. And then the solutions for where tangent was plus or minus root 3, and that's pi over 3, 4, I'll list them in, in order, 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. OK, for all solutions, need to be careful. Here, these were solutions to cosine. So everything coterminal with one of these is going to work. So I could add 2 pi n to these. Or we observed earlier that these were actually pi apart. So if I want to, I can consolidate and just say this is pi over 2 plus pi times n. That way, if n is 1, that gives me this solution. If n is even, I'll get something coterminal with pi over 2. And if n is odd, I'll get something coterminal with 3 pi over 2. OK. And then for all x, I don't need to come to each of these four and add 2 pi n, although that would be correct. It's much more concise to say I already found all the solutions for tangent. So it was pi over 3 plus pi n and 2 pi over 3 plus pi n. In all cases, n is an integer. <laughs> I'll just point out here, because these two were pi apart, I said, hey, we can just add a multiple of pi to them. Notice this ends up being all of the places where cosine is 0, which is odd multiples of pi over 2. So another acceptable way to describe that is 2n plus 1 copies of pi over 2. That gives me odd multiples of pi over 2. So lots of ways to describe that. As long as you have all of those angles, you've got the correct answer.